Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kirk Anderson, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Cambia Health Solutions. Uh, very grateful to share with you today how Cambia has, over the last several years, uh, been partnering with Amazon Web Services to build a person-focused health platform. So here's my agenda. Uh, we'll start off with a quick intro to Cambia Health Solutions. Uh, talk a little bit about the systemic technology challenges in the healthcare industry, which led us to create what we call the Janus platform. Uh, then I'll dive into that Janus platform with a layer by layer overview uh, and speak to how we've integrated Janus into our core business operations at Cambia. And then finally, touch on some of the benefits and value metrics achieved through our partnership with AWS. So first, a uh, brief intro to Cambia. Uh, Cambia Health Solutions is headquartered in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we've been serving the healthcare needs of individuals in the Pacific Northwest for over 100 years, and the company's roots actually date back to loggers, like you see pictured here, who pooled their resources to create a fund that would protect them in the event of accidents or other healthcare needs. It's really one of the first examples of what we think of as health insurance today. Today, Cambia is a not-for-profit health solutions company that includes insurance businesses like uh, the Regents Blues Plans that serve Oregon, Washington, Utah, and Idaho, as well as software as a service products serving healthcare consumers, payers, providers, and employers nationwide. As a taxpaying not-for-profit entity, the driving force of Cambia is really our cause, which you see pictured here, and that's to serve as a catalyst to transform healthcare, creating a person-focused and economically sustainable system. So in support of that ambitious cause, we've been active over the last decade, really, on multiple fronts, uh, whether that's through Cambia's investment arm of Echo Health Ventures, a uh, joint venture started with Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina and now part of an alliance with the investment arm of the Arkansas Blues Plan, to the development in 2017 of the core systems of engagement technology platform that powers Cambia today. And this platform, which we call the Janus platform, will be the focus of my presentation here. So more on that later. And then moving uh, forward here on the timeline, uh, around 2018 and recognizing that secure, seamless, scalable, and extensible healthcare interoperability would be central to the realization of that cause, we've been very active in helping to advance the cause of healthcare interoperability through national fire accelerator groups like the Karen Alliance and Project Da Vinci. And then building on that, um, actively integrating capabilities from various Cambia companies uh, like HealthSpark and MedSavvy, as well as vendor and strategic partnerships and other third parties, all of which culminated in 2020 with the launch of Journey, uh, a new Cambia company, which is a digital all-in-one health solution guided by data-driven intelligence and human expertise that helps healthcare consumers and their families make the most of the health benefits that they have. And so now rolling into 2021, uh, we're focused on bringing the innovation and capabilities of the Janus platform to serve the two plus million members of our insurance brands like Regents. So a well-known challenge that I think many of us working in healthcare technology can identify with is the fragmentation of the technical systems that power American healthcare today. Whether that's the EMR systems that live inside the provider and clinician facilities, the claims management systems that process claims inside health insurance companies. These traditional technology systems or platforms are not, in our view, person focused. In other words, uh, they don't consider or think about the individual healthcare consumer, but rather they see that individual within the different siloed business contexts uh, that they serve. So for example, inside an EMR system, uh, that individual is a patient 
and their data is oriented around their clinical interactions with a particular provider system. Inside a claims processing system that may exist in an insurance company or a PBM, that same individual is a member and the data models and the business logic in those systems are all optimized for insurance business things like collecting premiums, paying claims, et cetera. And so this siloed kind of very narrowly limited context view of that person at the center of all this care, uh, that individual health consumer is trying to navigate through the healthcare system. This is, we believe, one of the primary challenges of our broken health system today. And so now pivoting to the, this idea of a person-focused healthcare platform. What do we mean by that? Um, why did we decide to build it? And how have we partnered with AWS to bring this idea to life? So for us, uh, our response was to build the Janus platform. And the Janus platform is a collection of over 100, I think 150 now, microservices organized into an infrastructure layer, a foundation services layer, and a business layer. And the Janus platform was designed from the outset to be able to ingest and normalize and master healthcare data associated with a particular individual from throughout all those disparate healthcare systems of record, the EMR systems, the labs and pharmacy systems, as well as from multiple different insurance systems. And to do this, this meant we had to invest significantly and partner with AWS to navigate some of the very complicated challenges related to HIPAA, uh, user consent management, and I'll touch on those in a minute. But this is also where the critical importance of standard-based, secure healthcare interoperability interoper comes into play. Uh, this is critical not only to be able to get access to that data that lives in all those different systems, but to be able to build extensible business processes that bridge the siloed entities of healthcare so that we can create a system that to that person on the other end, um, the one that we're here to serve, they have experiences that to them feel like one holistic, seamlessly integrated system. Because ultimately that's really what we're trying to do. And it's, it's the applications and the experiences that we build on top of the Janus stack, leveraging the underlying microservices and the lower layers that bring the value that our consumers are seeking. So whether these are websites and mobile apps used by patients and members uh, or brokers uh, who help sell insurance or employers, or it could be a smart on fire app that is running inside an EMR system like an Epic or a Cerner. These are all different user experiences that we are targeting to serve with the Janus platform. All right, so diving into this a little more uh, into each of these layers and starting with the infrastructure layer. So services in Janus are all immutable, containerized microservices that are owned by small teams, small DevOps teams, and those teams are responsible for all aspects of that services delivery, uh, the quality, the security, as well as ongoing operations. And to support that approach, uh, our Janus infrastructure team and our InfoSec team have leveraged multiple AWS capabilities to automate DevOps processes and cloud infrastructure management so that our developers can focus on creating features and not have to focus on managing cloud infrastructure. So using AWS services like uh, Elastic Container Service and Elastic Container Registry uh, to manage the containerization of all these Janus services or AWS CloudFormation to describe and provision that underlying infrastructure automatically within the deployment pipeline uh, as well as AWS code build and code pipeline services to power our continuous integration and uh, delivery practices. We also use AWS services like CloudWatch and Elasticsearch 
which are components of our overall monitoring, alerting, and logging approach, and are really instrumental in those engineering teams' ability to manage the health and performance of their services in Janus, and also to ensure that protected health information, PHI data, is not being stored where it shouldn't be, for example, in an application log. So now moving up the stack of Janus from that foundation, uh, sorry, that infrastructure layer into the foundation layer, this is where we're using those DevOps tools um, from the infrastructure layer to build foundational services, which to us, these are core services that are taken advantage of by everything that sits on top, right? So things like authentication services where we take advantage of Amazon Cognito, uh, identity services, services for auditing and logging. And given our microservices architecture, each of these JANA services typically uh, is gonna manage and store its own data using AWS services like DynamoDB or Neptune or RDS, depending on what that service needs to do and what is the best data store and structure uh, to power that service. The DevOps teams are empowered to, to choose that uh, best fit. And then that is incorporated into the service and their pipeline and is own soup to nuts by that service team. Another uh, critical part of the Janus platform, critical ingredient, I guess, uh, is uh, event-driven interactions and architecture using publish, subscribe messaging and uh, event routing and processing and capabilities from Amazon like SQS and SNS uh, are a big part of how we deliver that event-driven architecture. And then of course, you've got AWS services uh, like S3 and AWS Lambda, and these are very commonly used by our dev teams as well. It's also in this foundation layer where we've oriented capabilities like data ingest using harvester services to ingest fire data, but also other healthcare data formats, including custom one-off formats that uh, hopefully through the years become fewer and fewer as healthcare interoperability continues to propagate. Uh, and then lastly, the analytics that we do on top of all of this data, creating personalized insights that are then published for consumption by the services up the stack and eventually making their way into the end user experience. And I'll talk a little bit more about these in this slide. So now we're up into the business layer. And in the business services layer of Janus, this is where things are starting to get increasingly healthcare specific. So enabling features like searching for providers or managing your medications, paying healthcare bills uh, through integrations with your insurance plan or your uh, HRA plan, if you have one, and validating benefits eligibility. Uh, as well as storing your personal health data that has been acquired from all of those disparate health systems of record throughout the ecosystem. And that particular service, which we call the Longitudinal Health Record Service, uh, is really at the heart of the Janus platform and was designed from the outset around the FHIR data model and FHIR structure. So we've got a very fire-focused orientation to data within the Janus platform. The foundations layer is also where uh, we orient our services that may sound like, uh, may sound foundational in nature, things like consent management, um, uh, but which in the healthcare arena are very complex and business context specific. So. Uh, that's a, a critical part of the business service layer as well. We're also using AWS uh, AI and ML services like Textract and Comprehend Medical to process data that comes in to our organization in a variety of formats, including faxes and uh, PDFs. And unfortunately, this is still uh, a fairly predominant ingest mechanism uh, for our insurance business regents for things like prior authorization requests um, and other data that comes into us from our clinical partners. 
And using these services from Amazon, it's really a great example of, uh, of our need to be flexible, to meet the needs of all entities. So while on one hand, we might have a particular provider that is more sophisticated and able to interact with us using a Smart on Fire app inside their EMR system, um, today, the vast majority of these interactions are, are not using Smart on Fire. Um, and they may be coming to us, like I said, in emails or faxes or PDFs, things like prior auth requests in particular. So what we did recently in our Regents insurance business um, was to take TextTract and use it to automatically extract printed text, uh, handwriting and, and other unstructured data from scanned documents and faxes uh, so that we can identi identify and understand and extract data from those sources to put into structured services inside Janus. All right, so the Janus platform is not only used to power the experiences and the applications of end users, it's also what we use to integrate all of this data and all of these capabilities into our core business operations, as well as um, integrate that technology with the humans, uh, the nurses, the care guides, concierge uh, services, billing experts. Uh, humans are a big part of what powers uh, the Janus platform as well. So using services from AWS, like AWS Connect for telephony, capabilities for our care guides or using Lambda services to drive integrations with our CRM platforms that we use for clinical operations or uh, unified omni-channel communications. All of this is a, a big part of Janus and AWS services are a big part of our making those capabilities come to life. One example uh, of this is that we had this need to continually improve on the service levels for some of these human interactions. And so we recently built a series of models, data science models using Amazon SageMaker to interpret the unstructured data that results from these interactions. Those may be chat-based conversations uh, with end users or phone calls. Um, but now having taken that data unstructured and turning it into structured data and contrasting um, the, the quality of uh, the care and the interactions with our service levels, uh, we've been finding a lot of value in using that as part of our quality control and continuous improvement for these types of human-based interactions. All right, so summarizing some of the key areas of benefit and value that we've achieved partnering with Amazon Web Services. Through that CICD automation that happens in our infrastructure layer, infrastructure layer of Janus and the automation of those DevOps pipelines, last year we did over 15,000 deployments all the way into production. And this agility is really important in our need to reduce uh, time to value for products and capabilities, and to be able to pivot quickly to meet emerging consumer needs. That automation is also valuable from a security perspective, allowing us to reduce our internal SLAs for remediating, remediating security vulnerabilities within one business day. Um, and again, allowing those uh, engineers to be spending more time building new capabilities and not patching underlying infrastructure. Using AWS capabilities like SageMaker, we've enabled our data scientists to reduce the time they spend uh, managing cloud infrastructure um, by up to 60 to 70%, uh, which is huge because that, that gives those resources more time to focus on building new data science models that bring value to our consumers. Fire interoperability, as I said, is core to this strategy and building that into the Janus platform from the outset has positioned us to optimize data ingestion and normalization from external healthcare systems and also allows us to take advantage of intelligent reuse opportunities 
that serve payers, providers, and consumers. Finally, AWS AI and ML services have been instrumental in our ability to meet our partners where they are today. So that even legacy integrations uh, that today may be reliant on data exchange through faxes and PDFs can be integrated uh, into the rest of the capabilities of this platform. And so that summarizes uh, our work to date in partnership with Amazon. And again, thank you for the opportunity. And I hope you all have an awesome day.